Hey y'all, Jason and Rachel here with Dirt Race Life. In this episode, yeah, all of this, finally got it done. Y'all stick around. All right, now wherever we put it on the back and wherever we put it on the top, you make a mental note, Rachel. Pull that tip all the way up into that corner. Yeah, pull it all the way up. All the way into that corner, yep. You want to come where? Right here? That's fine. All right, hang on. That's the way you, that's the way you're going to do it. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to stick the bottom as well then, okay? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Because that flat's going to be easier to maneuver. All right, so you're going to come out, and then we'll pull the paper back, Rachel. Here. If you see anything stay on the wax paper, you haul it because we got to back up. When they get a little wrinkle here or there, nobody freak out. Heat gun, raise blade, we'll take care of it. I ain't gonna get mad. We just gonna go with it. Right, Derek? Oh yeah. You know what? I think you're right, Derek. It's almost like you've done this before. I would swear there could be some experience speaking. Cause that's the fastest I've ever done half of one. I better be quiet, we ain't got half of it. But we only got one thing. Wheel wells right in here. Now, I'll cut that with a razor blade after mm -hmm. we get the ma matter of fact, no, I'm gonna cut it right now because I can see it from this day. And that piece, that uh, backing should just fall right off. Yeah, right, right, right. Got it? Got it. We think Derek's just working on it for you. Oh, it's, it's perfect. Anything I can do better, worse, whatever. Keep going. Tell me. Just like you're going. I'm not taking too big a stroke? No. Okay. Smaller sections will make it lay down better. I got you. Just sit here and do like three or four inches at a time mm -hmm. and work my way forward. Get all this after, after the... Uh, I'm gonna put, take a heat gun and push all that in. Yeah. And then cut it. Yes. What do you think, Rachel? Looking good. Got a lot of color. Yeah. I'm glad we put the fluorescent orange in the um, in the number instead of the regular orange. That way it'll, it'll jump off that. I am too. Yeah, you're fine. We'll go over everything with a heat gun. All right, I'm gonna start working this if you'll kind of lay. Side. You, should we go ahead and take a razor blade and run that plastic edge? You can. Or stretch into it and then... Well, I mean, if you go ahead and cut it, you could cut it and then go Ooh. inside. All right, well, Peter, let me make sure it's long enough. Just give me a little stretch there. I'm with you. That line, you're right, Derek. That line running in that corner like that has so got the right symmetry. Uh-huh. Use your razor blade on that one minute and trim that up. This card looked ten times better with spoiler, but no spoiler allowed in this class. So. Oh really? Yeah. It's always a better with spoiler. Well, because I, I lowered the deck quite a bit. I got this deck down about four inches. That was just about all I could do without having to like cut the whole back roll cage out of the car. Mm -hmm. But I got it down as much as I could where it kind of flattened it out, but... Hey, while I had a minute, I wanted to show y'all how I do something. On these spinner wheels, cutting them out. On the right side, my body is actually outside of the tire, so when the tire comes up, um, it won't hit on the body, it'll slide to the inside of it, but on the left side, you know, it sits, the tire actually is outside of it. And I would have to bow this way out because I've got a little bit of offset going on in the body right here, and like, it's in the middle of the tire, I'm not even going to worry about it and in the classes that we're running and stuff I don't have to have like all kind of contours in the body 
So on the left side, I'm not worried about it. I put contour on the right side because I got a lot of bracing and stuff that goes in there because it's got a lot of air that's going to be pushing against it anyway. On the left side, I just pin the top and the bottom. Don't worry about the rest of it. It makes it a lot easier to get this side off anyway. But I have to make sure that I clear the tire, you know, through its movement to not hit. And what I did was, is I had the tire on here with the car sitting at ride height, and I just took and I just followed the tire all the way around, like an inch and a half out, all the way around to create clearance. And that's with the, the lead and the trail and all that, like the rear end set up correctly. So I'm in the right position front to back on this. And I just took my clippers and ran all the way around it, about an inch and a half. So this is like about like 31 inches across here. But I roughed that because I knew I was gonna cut a little more. And so what I do is, is I went around it, but then I turned around and I've got the car sitting down, okay? But then I took a jack and put right over here on the left side and I just jacked the left side all the way up until, you know, it started to pick the right side of the car up. So I got the car, you know, picked way up on the left side right here. And then this is what I do. I just use a scribe and I just take and get in the center of my floater hub. I've done this the last couple of times I've done bodies and it works pretty decent. I'll just take and find that biggest spot when I roughed it. So like I'll come out a little bit and try to find that largest spot where I don't have any gaps so that it creates a smooth circle. And so it's up now because I'm jacked up. So I'm going to create kind of like a U because this circle is higher than when it's sitting at right height. It's going to drop down some. So now that I'm, here we go. So like it contacts right over here, I run out and then right over here, I run out on each side. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. And then I'm just gonna scribe that, make sure I don't come off the hub in the middle. So I'm scribing that all the way around. I do not know. I will look these, what is this, a compass? Compass, this is a compass. And anyway, I think I got this thing on Amazon. I'll put a link to it on the website. I need to work on the website and get it up there. So I went around and I just made a scribe all the way around like that. And then what I'll do is, is this is curving back in on the bottom because this tire's pushed up. I'll go, you know, like straight down here and straight down here. Where this starts curving in, I'll just go straight down. And that's the way I do it. One of the problems that I've run into, like with this, you know, like you take a heat gun and you really cook this vinyl all the way around. Like Rachel had a heat gun last night. It was just getting all this vinyl really good and hot um, and making sure all the bubbles and all the wrinkles and everything, she did a great job on it. This edge right here, you're pulling the tires off and you're rubbing this edge, you know, cause you're not rolling it. So if you can roll this edge right here, that's really gonna help. And you know, like maybe I might go to the, uh, to the auto parts store and they got the little black like door trim and I've put that on before. And I may put that on here because the car's got a black background and do that and it probably would look good. But I've had problems with it. You know, eventually it starts coming off. Um, and I always said that if I could get it on there while it's good and clean, I probably could get that 3M adhesive in there to like hold and the stuff to stay on there. If I got the absolute smallest one. I don't know, uh, have any of y'all got any experience with that? Because... I haven't found anything that really works good when you don't have all of those special tools to create those like knurled edges and do all that stuff. But uh, so far, this is what I've been doing. It works, so I'm just gonna go back and just carefully trim that out all the way around. So I'm gonna try something new here. I have been using these Makita power shears for years and I've been struggling with them lately and I've changed out my cutter heads and stuff but I've noticed I'm really having to push with them when I'm cutting. It seems like as long as I'm doing something short and I got my angles just right, they still cut good. But when I'm making my long runs now with these, I feel like that they're kind of hanging up and I've checked my cutters, I've changed my cutters. I think that it's just that my mouth right here, I think I've gotten stretched a little bit. I don't think that they're laying as sharp as to each other, as close as they need to. They look right, but they don't feel right anymore. These are really expensive. I've had these power shears probably 20 years. 
Um, I think this thing right here is like over $300 now. Um, so I'm gonna do what I need to do eventually to get this working right again. But one thing that I have always seen with these is, is when they're shearing, the way they work with just the two, I always end up with a bit of a wave. I always have like a bit of a wave that I get in the parts. And I think that's because it's pushing down, like push, 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 push the way it works. And so I wanted to try, I was having trouble. I didn't have time to sit here and work and try to shim because it's, it's go time, y'all. You know? So I got on Amazon and I will put a link on the website, dirtracelife.com. If you haven't checked out our website, I keep links to stuff, information, some blueprints on car parts and different things going on there to help. But uh, anyway, I'll put the link to these. So I just looked through the power shears and you know, the way I do it on Amazon, I look for, you know, what has a bunch of been sold with a lot of good reviews where it's not just a few fake reviews, all that deal um, for the price. This one here, it's Wild Edge, five amp, variable speed, um, the three fingers where it's in the middle. So I've seen some guys talk about that these don't create that rolled lip because it's actually curling a piece out of the middle. So you get your flat on both sides. The metal on both sides is, you know, doesn't get deformed. It just curls the piece out of the middle. So I hadn't tried these before. So I got it and I'm gonna try it. So if it's a disaster, I'm fixing to make a disaster of the car, but you know, hey, I got a practice piece here. So, so anyway, but yeah, uh, I think it was $42. Uh, that's 2024. Who knows? You know how prices are, so check it. But I will put the link to it. Yeah, so it, takes, so it takes that little curl out the middle. So it's different, uh, definitely different, but one way to find out, and I got two pieces that overlap right here. So we'll see what happens if I can follow this. my power shears do. Now my power shears will turn really short. So there is a difference. And so I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to take my power shears and come back from the other side because it felt like, you know, as I was trying to turn, it was really hanging. So they've got a limited turn radius. So there is a difference between them. Let me grab my shears right quick. So let me cut you off right quick right there. All right. Here's that. Unplug you. These are going to be my straight run. And this bad boy here, good old Faithful here, she's going she gonna to have to continue to be for curves is what it's looking like, y'all. I mean, that do curve, but I could feel as I was turning, it was like hang, 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 you know. So, oh, am I going to go this way or am I going to go bend that down just a little bit? I got off my run just a hair, so clean this off right quick. Get you out. And... I 
I'm in a shadow. <laughs> I can't. If I can't see it, I can't stay on the line. So let's get back this other way. Got two pieces of metal right there, but it'll cut two. Not a problem. <laughs> See where I was jumping onto that second piece and I was kind of having to work with a little bit. One thing about these is, is that the opening of them is just right there in that mouth. It's like I've, I've got my hands, I can have my fingers, you know, like real close and I don't have to worry about getting in it. Um, I do think with this being open on the front and that end, you know, right there, like, yeah, you, yeah, you, you got to freaking keep your fingers away from that thing. There is a difference there. So there it is, real time. That's the difference between the two different kinds of shears. So I learned something here, y'all. Last night we were just focused on getting the sides on, but then tonight, now that I got the sides on, had a chance for them, you know, to, uh, to cure and everything, I left all of this loose on the bottom because for one thing, it made it a lot easier to put the wrap on because we didn't have to go over any rivets or anything on it. But now I got the sides here and then we gotta figure out those sides are going on there and get all of that cut to match. And I think this thing's gonna look fantastic. And you see I left this long right here, but we got three pieces. One of them gets cut in half and we were gonna put this piece on first. That way we could take, and we're just gonna take and see what looks best as far as the angle right here. We're gonna put some angle in that cut that, trim the bottom, pop rivet it all. I've already got the body braces in behind this. I just haven't put the pop rivets in or anything yet. The less pop rivets that were in the body, the easier it made for us to do the wrap on it. Um, I would rather, I would rather have the rivets. I've got, I've got chrome rivets, I've got black rivets, and I've got orange rivets. And depending on where the rivet goes, I'm gonna use one of those three and I'd much rather see that rivet head than me sitting here trying to heat gun and work around all those rivets. And when I'm first doing it, I get the wrinkles that run out from them. I'm not real good at it. Derek helping me last night. That's the first time that Derek's helped me. Now he knows what he's doing. I mean, that's the fastest we've ever put vinyl on. I say we, cause he never helped me before, but the fastest I've ever been a part of putting vinyl on before. So shout out to Derek. It was really good, really good for him to help me on that. Okay, so I'm gonna get this cut. You there? You yeah. happy? Yeah. All of it, Oh yeah. All right. All right. Now my end's easy. See, you should have went for this end. Yeah, sure. Mine's flat, so it's easy. Okay. Yeah. I should be able to just jack it up. Get up underneath it and start drilling holes and throwing rivets to it. I got the backing already back there. Alright, let me grab the uh Tape measure, tape measure, and scissors, and okay. So, if we back that point up, do we want to? We want to cut this plastic and like run this on out straight, or do we want to do it like I, we need to go straight with it, don't we? Yeah, because if you're going for a complete upside down U. Yeah, I need that. Let let. Where's the level? I got it, I got it. Yeah, baby, cut that. Hang on a second. Get one forward. Find it. Ah. Uh, nope. Too, I'm too close to the board.
to this being down here. Well, it's going to come up some, so hang on. So that is at, all right, well, it's about seven and, yeah, seven and a half. Okay, a little bit. So I'll come up just a hair. I'm going to go forward just a little bit. And go down just a hair. Down just a little more. What are you doing? Are you aiming for that corner that intersection? That corner edge of the... I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. What do you think? Eight inches? Or do you think I should come up some more? So I think it's gonna look that. low if it's lower than. I that. think you should keep it higher. Yeah, because to stay at that corner intersection, we end up with too much angle, don't we? Hey, Rachel, come over, over here and look. Yeah, come over here and look, and hey, you hold your spot, and then we'll just let her decide what looks good. If you don't mind, please. Yeah, come on. Because I'd rather, I think you'd be better off keeping it higher. All right. Just in case something wasn't Yeah, ready. that's true. That's so true. Clear. Okay, so back up and tell us that angle where, like, in other words, this angle down. So you see where that's at, right? Yeah. Okay, and so, like, at what point, we, we want this to intersect with the back right here, like that spot. We like that spot right there. But as far as, like, how high that should be, that that looks like that's kind of running correctly. Should it go up? Should it go down? Like from where it's at? What are you thinking? Slightly tap it down. Slap it down just a little? About right there. You like that? The reason I say that is because it's following the graphics. It's following the graphics? Okay, I see what you're saying. So it's kind of, okay. All right. Thank you very much, ma'am. You're welcome. I'm just gonna shake in like, let's just cut this thing off. Now you hold what you got. You got it? Yep. All right, I'm gonna mark it. I'm gonna trim this one exact right back here. <coughs> and then I'm gonna get this old one. It's still, all right, hold what you got. I think we got what we need. I think we got what we need. All right. All right. Yep, yep, yep. So. Hold that out for me for a second. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna put them in. I'm gonna put them in. Yeah, because the dirt's gonna want to push that part. Okay, we gotta be real careful right there. Yeah, lay that two back down. All the way down, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna get all this. And I'm gonna come back and deal with that top corner. Come back and deal with that top corner. And we're just gonna have to put a heat gun on. Hey, Rach. Yeah. Come over here with a heat gun. Heat that up before I push it down. Don't push, just, just heat it up for me. Let me get that masking tape off because it's going to make it glue more stay. Alright, shrink it down for me. What part do you want me to shrink see, it down? See where, it, see where it's right. not touching? I just want to, I just want to pull that, I just want to shrink that up. It's, it's okay. It's okay. It's taking it. It's taking it. We're okay. We'll let her work on the bubbles later. Okay, crisis averted. That was my own fault. It was my fault. I admit it. It was definitely my fault. I definitely did it. Thank you. Right, yeah. All right, we'll let, we'll let her push that down and keep going on it. 
Just stay on the outside of that red line. Stay on the outside of that red line. Yeah, if we're going to sacrifice something, we're going to sacrifice that. Yes. Okay. Well, let me get in here. Right. I got it. I got it. I got the game plan now. You, you got me. I'm sold. It's going to look better not having this part on it. And then just follow that line. push up under that I'm thinking we want to like go over and me stick it on that side and then cut with a razor blade yeah, the type of lever did on the fender yeah and fun. then and then lay it onto it so like I think you that's put a, a little heat too yeah I think that's about as far as I want to go and then let you just pull it over mm -hmm. go ahead and stick it to that edge all right yeah yeah and then do that So I talked to uh, Kevin Tripp with Extreme Concepts. Mm -hmm. Jamie Lewis, he had he's got a bunch of work from him. He recommended him and everything. But anyway, I called him and asked him about it, and he said um, he said that he was about a week and a half, two weeks behind. So he had six cars, six cars in front of us on this car, on my new car. And he said probably in a week and a half, two weeks, he could start on it and on the graphics and told me to get all the sponsors, get all the, uh, anywhere I can get vector files, get vector files and PDFs and stuff or anything sponsor wise, you know. Mm -hmm. And then car number, the colors, and just my ideas. And then he would be able to come back and say, okay, you know, here's what we can do and everything. Nice. And then he said like, probably like two weeks after that, so, as far as getting her butt, when I do that, I'm going to get the Dirt Race Life vinyl and stuff made and see if we can't have a I bunch of vinyl made. At one time. Well, and, get, and maybe we can get some stickers made up for some of our sponsors and stuff, you know, as well. So, so trying to get some, some new graphics and vinyl done. Yeah. So, I'm liking how this turned out. Of course, black and orange always go good together. You all know how that is. And I got a headlight kit coming, but they're on back order. So I, I'll get it when I get it. But yeah, turned out pretty good. Turned out pretty good. I really like how that we had some extra vinyl there and how that turned out on that top. I really like that. Kind of tied it all together here. But the back, the back deck is intentionally blank because we're probably going to get some like big graphics, maybe sponsors, Dirt Race Life, stuff like that. Up on this back deck so that's the reason you don't see anything on it yet but yeah turned out good didn't it Rachel? It looks good. Now how long is it going to stay that way? Um no comment right now because I don't want to jinx myself. <laughs> don't jinx yourself. No we're not going to do that. Don't jinx yourself. No. So I just want to point out right quick I would not be able to do this. Rachel wouldn't be doing this if we did not have the support of our channel members on Dirt Race Life. You know, those of y'all that like a bunch of y'all at $5 a month, a few at $10 a month, that's how I'm able to put this car on the track while still being able to build a new, you know, street stock for the Crate Racing USA class as well. Could not do this without y'all because I promise you that money is how I'm able to do this for her and get her on the track. Very, very appreciative of that. Thank y'all. If you're not subscribed, hit subscribe, folks, because there's going to be a lot of track action this year with both cool spring cars and leaf spring cars, street stock classes and factory stock classes, and we will see you next time.